I will not take much of your time. But I'm here to encourage you that as children of God, we are called to God's kind of lifestyle. This is a lifestyle of positive faith, positive thinking, positive talking, and positive acting. These are our roots in God. When you have this kind of lifestyle, nothing can change your mind concerning what you believe. Nothing on the outside can dictate the direction of your confession. And nothing can derail you from your focus. Nothing can derail you, your focus. Remember, it is not mere wishful thinking, but a rightful focus that establishes a deep sense of intimacy with God. It is not mere wishful thinking, but a rightful focus that establishes a deep sense of intimacy with God. I'm here to talk to you about a rightful focus. Let someone say a rightful focus. Yes. A rightful focus. Let me take you to the book of Matthew. Chapter 6. Let's take it from verse 19. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eyes are good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye are bad, if your eyes are bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. This means if you are focused only on making money, a large slice of life will pass you by. I mean, a very important part of life will pass you by. This is why you see people with riches without joy. Money without the essentials of life. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and yet loses his soul? People of God, every time you turn to man for help, to get you out of your trouble, your unpleasant situation, you are only postponing the evil day. 
I mean you are storing up future troubles for yourself. That is why whatever solution you receive does not last. If you allow whatever situation you are in to change your focus, you are finished. Because broken focus is the real reason men fail. Say to your neighbor, broken focus is the real reason men fail. As a child of God, you determine your focus. Nobody else can. You can complain. You can blame your situation on poor family background. Bad counseling of friends. Or the economic situation of the country. But one thing is clear. You are responsible for what you give your attention to. Your focus is your personal decision. What is your situation? If the situation you are in now is contrary to your desire, stop. Take time to change your focus. Pay any price to protect your purpose in life because no one else can do it for you. Focus is all about the hearts. What God values in man is beyond human discernment, and this is planted in the hearts. Our Savior Jesus Christ said, Where your treasure is, there your hearts will be also. Without a rightful focus, you are likely to be overexcited by any good thing that comes your way, just as you are likely to be overwhelmed by every little misfortune you encounter. Where your heart is, where your focus is, there your heart will be also. Where your focus is, there your hearts will be also. I want you to know that what God values in man is beyond human discernment, and this is planted in the hearts. Your heart is the communication point. Contact point for God as well as for Satan. Where your focus is, there your heart will be also. Focus To be focused is to look at God. Because God is in his word. You must reset your focus. To reset your focus is to set your heart, your mind, on God by looking at his word. Your spiritual eyes must be focused on God who is unseen by looking at his word. Are you with me? Your spiritual eyes must be focused on God by looking at his word. Your Ears, your eyes, your mouth 
must be tuned to God's word. Since faith is our root to God. Our focus should be only on what God has to say about our situation, not what our natural circumstances, socioeconomic or political situation in the country has to say. Daniel was conscious of his faith in God, even under serious tension, pressure, and threat to his life. What he needed to do in order to go free was to become false to his God. F-A-L-S-E. False to his God. Worship the Babylonian gods and become the right hand man of the king with all the mouth, watery rights and privileges. But on the contrary, he was conscious of his faith in God and he stood for what he believed. He knew that with God, you can face life's final deadline with confidence. Tell your neighbor with God, I can face life's final deadline with confidence. Are you talking of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were conscious of their faith in God. Even under serious tension, pressure, and threat to their lives. What they needed to do in order to go free was to go on their knees and say, Oh, King, we are sorry. We will serve your God, and your God will be our God. But on the contrary, they were conscious of their faith in God and they stood for what they believe. They knew that with God you can face life's final deadline with confidence. People of God, I want you to know that what you are thinking now will happen in time. What you are thinking now will happen in time. The mind is never free. You are either thinking of doubt or thinking of faith. To those who live and walk by faith, they believe, they know that winning does not start around them. It begins inside them. Say to your neighbor, winning does not start around you. It begins inside you. Winning does not start around you. It begins inside you. Your life will always go to the level of your thoughts. This is because your thoughts have presence. They are like currents moving through the air. Those thoughts are capable of drawing you closer to God or driving you away from God. Your thoughts are capable of bringing you blessings or denying you blessings. Whatever you are thinking right now, that is where your battle starts. What are you thinking right now? If what you are thinking is not according to the truth of God's word, it will remain idle meaningless and oftentimes 
destructive. Mind management is the first priority for an overcomer. Yes, mind management is the first priority for an overcomer. When you know what you need to overcome, then you can make a difference. David knew that he needed to overcome the Philistine warrior. That was why he yielded himself to God by speaking the word of faith and the giant fell. When you know what you need to overcome, then you can know what it takes to overcome it. The fact that people around you are losers does not mean you cannot overcome. You can because the one who overcomes lives inside of you. Every day I live to overcome because the one who overcomes lives inside of me. If the one who overcomes lives inside of you, you can overcome obstacles every day. People of God, the secret of my success is in God's word. When you fearlessly act upon the word of God and joyously cast your every care on him, victory is as sure as the rising of the sun. Make God's word the standard for your life. Make God's word your principle. Make God's word your rule. In it lies God's promises for your life. People of God, I'm here to tell you to make a rightful focus. It is not mere wishful thinking, but a rightful focus that establishes a deep sense of intimacy with God. Learn to speak for God's word every day if you are going to be victorious in your confrontation with Satan. Jesus Christ has given us his word as a special weapon which no power of Satan can withstand. Speak God's word over your situation. When you speak God's word over your situation, 
you have released your faith and brought God's power on the scene. Thank you. So, right now, get ready to speak forth God's word over that situation. You will realize God's power on the scene. Are you ready? Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. 